here to, to, to reason with people. We're passing out these little, uh, these little million dollar bills, and on this million dollar bill has a great question that says, uh, will you be with God in heaven? Now you might say, ah, I don't believe in God. Well, that's not what the Bible says. The Bible says you do believe in God, but you've suppressed the truth and unrighteousness. What that means is you don't believe in God, but you've decided to, hey buddy, how you doing, man? No entity the size of the universe would really care about what some, what people like us, a really microscopic entity on a cosmic scale, really are doing. What's your name, man? I'm Corey. I'm uh, Mike. Mike, all right, Mike. Nice to meet you. All Thank right. You. Yeah, be thankful you're not up here, eh? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, Mike, so can I ask you a question, buddy? What is what is your worldview? Like, if you were to say, I'm a what? What's your faith, position, or religion, or whatever? Agnostic. Agnostic. Hey, so you're saying you don't know if there's a God? No one can know. You, and no one can know? That's, that's the truth. No one can So could know. you be wrong about everything you claim to know? Uh, okay. So, Mike, yeah. <laughs> what, am I going to, like, levitate? So, Mike, here's the thing. How would you know that no one can know? That doesn't make any sense. Do you have all knowledge? Pardon? Can you repeat it again? Do you have all knowledge? Do you know everything? No. So then how can you know that no one can know that there's a God? Is it impossible that there's a God? No. Okay, so so then you, you could know. You couldn't know, but it's not. Knowing that there's a God isn't the same as actually... Uh, how do I say it? Like, agnostic isn't acknowledging... Ag agnosticism is saying that there could be a God. Okay. But you'll never know for sure. And that's okay. What say. Like, you'll okay. never know for sure. Do you know anything for sure? Uh, certain things, yeah. Okay, what's something you know for sure? Uh, myself. You know yourself? Well, that, you exists, that is myself. Okay. But how do you know that you exist, man? How do you know you're, you know you're not a, a matrix in a box, right? That's a fallacy. That's a fallacy this guy's saying. Do you think that's true? I don't know. Okay, Mike, let me just tee this up. You've been really kind here. Let me, let me just tee this up. So what we're doing here today, as crazy as this looks, is we're actually suggesting that this book, this is a, this is a, a really light version. We believe that the Bible is true and the Word of God. And what we're actually saying, even beyond that, is if you don't base your thinking on this book, Jesus Christ and His Word, then your worldview starts to become kind of nonsensical. It doesn't make a lot of sense. Wait, wait a minute. You, you can't take, you can't take the, like, the, the, the book word for word, I mean. Okay. So so let me ask you this. I just, a lot of it's on it. A lot of it's based on interpretation. Okay, just one sec. So on whose authority do you claim anything to be true? My just wondering. So you, you have... You have some authority that you use to make... I never said I have any But you must have, like, like, how do you come to understanding what truth is, Mike? Like, what do you do? How do you do that? There's evidence and personal experience that kind of, like... Evidence. There's, okay. There are two, two arms of what dictates that something. So you, are you your own source of authority, then? No. No? So, so how do you come to those understandings, then? So give me an example of something you know. You said that you know your... your you're you, I guess you said. Because that's, that's, that's the only thing you can really feel is like your own being, you know? Okay. So, but what I'm asking, man, is that you understand that everyone walking these streets has a source of authority. And what I mean by that is we all have an ultimate arbiter of what's true, what's right, what's wrong, what's real, what's not real, what's, what's good, what's bad. And here's what I'm suggesting. Now, I don't know if you've ever even heard the Christian message before. And I'll just share that real quick because that's really the whole point of us being out here. Do you, know the, do you know the answer about the afterlife from the Bible, what it says about that? Because that's really the big question. Philosophers have been wrestling with that one for a long time. You'll, you'll never know that, man. But if you... How, how would you... have anyone go into the afterlife and, and send back any sort of message or evidence indicating any sort of outcome? Okay, that's a good question. Can I, I'll just share this real quick, though. It actually says up here that we're created by God. That we're created special in God's image. Just give me two minutes to see this up. You're made in God's image and God's likeness. That means you're special. That means you're precious in God's sight. That means that as one made in God's image, the good thing is you're moral. Are you a moral guy? You believe in right and wrong? There is no right and wrong. Murder? There is no right and wrong. There's only the consequence of what I will rape. Is rape wrong? Yeah, by okay. societal standards, yes. By societal standards. Okay, so hold on thought. Good, good, good point. But as one made in God's image, you're a moral guy, I hope. Everyone here hopes that you're not going to think you're going to shoot everyone, right? No. I'm not going to do that. But here's the problem, is that we have rejected God. We know God exists, but we suppress the truth. We even say God doesn't exist. And because of that, we're guilty of what the Bible calls sin. We've lied, we've stolen, we haven't been thankful, we've rejected God. Hold on. And because we've rejected God knowingly and willfully, 
then the problem is, is we're guilty of sinning against God. If that was the end of the story, it would be totally right for the Creator to punish His creation. Hold on, just let me finish. And God says, God declares, God has all authority. Jesus actually said, all authority in heaven and earth has been given to Him. And He says, that my, my word is this, that all people who reject me generally get what they deserve, and they get what they want. They rejected God, so in the afterlife, because God's eternal, the people who, who are in Jesus Christ go to heaven, the people who reject God go to hell, which is a place of eternal torment, suffering, terrible, and that's eternal. The good news is this, though, is that God is also God of mercy. And what that means is God, is God has made a way that He can both satisfy His goodness and His justice, but dismiss your case and extend you mercy and grace and good news. And here's what He's done. God steps out of heaven into His own creation. Like a hand fills a glove, He becomes a man, a God-man. Jesus Christ, fully God and fully man. History testifies. Hold on, this guy lived. He, he, Can I interject? You can't just let me finish. I'm almost done. Jesus lived a perfect life at the age of about 33. He goes to a Roman crucifixion. He dies the death required as payment for sin. Mike, this is really important, man. He dies my death. He dies in my place. He bears the wrath. He, he takes on my judgment in my place. What a loving and kind thing that he did. And then he dies, but he didn't stay dead. The Bible says that God rose Jesus from the dead. And now Jesus reigns supreme. He, all authority in heaven and earth has been given to him. And he, now he says, Mike, this isn't about getting religion. It's not about coming to my church or that guy's church or this person's church. It's about simply turning from your sin. Stop rejecting God. Stop sinning against God. Turn from your sin. Embrace God's free gift. Nothing you can do to earn it. And he says, Mike, if you respond in humility and repentance of faith, he lifts your death sentence, and He gives you eternal life with Him forever. All your sins, past, present, future, entirely forgiven. And that's the good news. But beyond that, you're, here's the good I mean, and, and then you can ask your question. But what, what the Bible says is, yes, Jesus Christ died to redeem my soul for eternity. That's amazing. But He also died to redeem my reasoning now. And here's what that means. If I reject Jesus then my brain is a horn plane, and I, I have no basis to reason about anything. You're, you're misframing a lot of what I said. I never, okay. I never said that. But then paint it out of the What you're doing is misframing what I've said okay. and attacking that. That's a, that's a straw man thing. Okay. So then which God are you believing in? To say you can never know if that's a God, and, and to claim that you do know is God, and that's... Okay. But not based on any evidence. There is no God. There is no evidence suggesting one way or another. But that's what, not no, that's not what the Bible says. Yeah, no. The Bible doesn't say the Bible says actually this. It yeah, says the that Bible's every written like how many years ago, man? Like you Are you saying the Bible's wrong? Yeah, yeah like okay. In, okay. in today's stance, you have to take a progressive stance. You have to like interpret those, those words written in the Bible how it was like what? Like okay. how many thousands of years ago? So in so today's stance. In today's fair. context. Sorry. So you're saying the Bible's not true. I'm not saying it's true. Yes. You're, you're doing the same thing. You're making... oh, I'm trying to back up the truck, dude. I'm not trying to get up your nose here. Are you, are you saying the Bible is true or not true? Do you believe in absolute truth? No, there is no absolute truth. Is it absolutely true? There's no absolute truth. Are you, are you, can you hear me now? No, I'm just asking. Mike, this is the problem right here, dude. Can I just... Can someone help me out? Mike! Mike, you're doing great. Listen, listen. L listen, Mike. Yeah, listen up, guys. Listen. Look, this is Mike's words, not mine. When I say it's absolutely true, that there's no absolute truth, does not that sound a little foolish to you? It's absolutely true, there's no absolute truth. Mike, that's exactly why God says if you reject Him, you become a fool. A fool's not stupid. You're not. You're probably smarter than I am. But Mike, you know there's absolute truth because your actions speak louder than your words, man. 